Hello there, it's your friend Phil. Welcome to a quick ITTO brainwashing. Oh, sorry, I mean brainstorming session. Now, you know, sometimes it feels like brainwashing when you're studying stuff that you don't understand. You're studying stuff that you're cramming, but you don't really understand what you're studying. So I hope we're not having brainwashing sessions. Let's have brainstorming sessions. All ITTOs are equal, but some are more equal than others. Not knowing the more equal ones cold could cost you your exam. And not knowing the less equal ones could cost you a domain on the exam. So what am I trying to say? Know your ITTOs. Read the PMBOK guide at least once. Did I just see eyes roll? <laughs> Read the PMBOK guide at least once and as many times as you get a mental block on an ITTO. So if you're going through your study period and you get a mental block on, for example, an affinity diagram, then open up the PMBOK guide. You see, this is the mothership, not for project management, but for your exam. It's the mothership for your PMP exam or your CAPM exam. Give to Caesar what belongs to him. If you're studying a PMI exam and you don't want to read the standard, well, sorry, you're at risk. I would recommend reading the standard. Lots of folks say, oh, that book is ridiculous. It's like Ambien. It's ho hopeless. Don't read it. Study it for your own good. I've had students who say, Phil, if I'd known, I would have read that book. The language on the exam was just like the book. So read it. Be sure to leave no stone unturned as you study. Look up all of those ITTOs on various sites. I'm going to show you some of these sites, sites such as the CDC, PMO site, ASQ, Google, Wikipedia, and the PMI website, if you are a member. Don't forget, if you're a member of the PMI, you actually get tons of free documents, books, videos, all sorts of great stuff if you are a member. Try to find out where the portal is if you are a member to access these books. It used to be books 24-7. I'm not sure what it's called now, but if you are a member, there's great stuff available to you. So, talking about ITTOs, I got a comment down below if you are on this page on Facebook, my Facebook page. There's a comment from Hamid about ITTOs and wanted to know more. Well, I can't dive into every single ITTO, but I'm going to give you the top of the waves for you to understand how to effectively study ITTOs. The best way to study ITTOs is take a screen grab of this if you can and create your own and try to fill in this blank sheet for every process without looking at the PMBOK guide after studying or without looking at your study guide. In the middle, we have the process. There are 47 processes. I hope you're getting to the point where you know all of them, cold. And then you've got the blue box. What do I need to begin this process, the input? And then what do I get out of this process, outputs? And how do I perform this process, tools and techniques? So as you encounter a process, you need to ask yourself those questions. And if you are not able to effectively define what you do to perform the process or what you need to begin the process or what you get out of the process, then it's a red flag. It means that you need to study more. So let me show you really quickly, just as an example, and this is a working session, let me show you really quickly how I would tackle this if I were you. So I was preparing for any of the exams and I use this blank template. Let's fill in, for example, create WBS. Create WBS is creating the work breakdown structure. My question to you would be, have you created one in the past? Do you know what it looks like? If you don't know what a WBS is, read it in more detail and search for more information about it. Now, I don't hold shares in this company, but this is a really great website. It's called criticaltools.com. They've got software that interacts with Microsoft Project. You can create a WBS and then you can latch it onto MS Project and it enables you to see in a graphical view what exactly 
the work breakdown structure is and how it interacts with granular details in your schedule that are even below the work package level. Now, if what I'm saying is gobbledygook to you, it means you need to go into more detail with the WBS. They have a great tool called WBS Chart Pro. And I'm not sure if they still have that. They've got WBS Schedule Pro. Let's see what else they've got. WBS Chart Pro doesn't seem to be here anymore. But let's do a quick Google search for WBS Chart Pro. Try again. WBS Chart Pro. And I know way back when they had a free trial of it, but the more you get your hands dirty with project management, the more you actually do what you study and what you read, the bigger the payoff for you. Okay, trust Google, they're not letting me go to that place. But you get the idea. Oh, here we go. So WBS Chart Pro, if we click on this, let's see where that takes us. There we go. So this is WBS Chart Pro, great application. I have used this on projects with project teams from the past and it gives you a hands-on to enable you really know what a WBS is. So I say this just for example, in Create WBS, if you haven't created one, create one. The question would then be, what do I need to begin this process? Well, for Star, you definitely need your scope management plan. What else do you need? If you're stuck and you can only think of one thing, go back to the mothership. Look up what else you need. Look up what else you need for creating a WBS. How do you perform this process? Well, if I go back to a good old critical tool site, I know I'm breaking down this stuff into lower levels of detail. So I know I'm doing something called decomposition. And I would fill that in and type in decomposition as a tool and technique. Decomposition is breaking down the high level of work into lower levels of work. Let me show you another document that's out there. If we type in Department of Energy and Earned Value. I'm showing you all sorts of secrets here. <laughs> Be sure to leave a good comment. All right. So th there's a few PDFs out there. I think it's Module 2. That's module one. Let's type in module two. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because it is a very detailed discussion about the WBS and enables you to understand it in a lot of detail. Um, it's kind of holding me up. So I'm not going to delay this, but you can see module one over here. It's kind of grayed out. Something's happening with Google. but look for the DOE Earned Value Module 2. It's usually in a PDF. Get it, read it, understand it. And that helps you better understand what exactly decomposition is. What do I get out of this? Well, hopefully you remember that it's not the WBS verbatim. It's called the Scope Baseline. Okay, so that would be my approach to learn in ITTOs. The output is the scope baseline. What exactly is the scope baseline? What is in it? Well, in the scope baseline, you've got the WBS, you've got the WBS dictionary, and you've got the project scope statement. And that tells me that my project scope statement is probably an input to this then. So I have my project scope statement as one of the inputs to create WBS. You see where I'm going with this? So you need to be able to create this on your own without looking at the PMBOK guide when you are a few weeks or months even to your exam. One of the ways you can do this better is also look for certain ITTOs that are talked about in the PMBOK guide, but not in enough detail. Let me take you to this website here. Let's go over to CDC's website. 
and CDC's website, you can get to this PMO website by typing in tiny.cc forward slash sigma PMO, just like I've got it up there. That takes you to CDC's website. And you can see they've got examples of all sorts of the ITTOs. It's quite remarkable. Here's an example of the WBS dictionary. Click on it. It downloads it for you. An example of the WBS. I wrote the author of this site, or one of the people who worked on it, and I said, what a great job. I mean, you've got all this stuff out there that students of project management who don't even work for CDC can look at. It's a great site. So if you're studying for your exam and you're stumped and you don't know what a business case looks like, what change log looks like, hey, go to the site. Look at the examples. Google the terms. Look for explanations beyond what is in the PMBOK guide. You might have read a term such as product analysis, but do you really know what it is by reading that definition as is in the PMBOK guide? You see, the PMBOK guide becomes even more powerful when you understand what the ITTO is outside of their description in the PMBOK guide. So read product analysis somewhere else and then read what is in the PMBOK guide. It makes so much more sense and it has so much more value. Another website that I would like you to take a look at is ASQ.org. ASQ.org has got all sorts of great stuff. Any of those quality tools, those quality ITTOs, you know, the seven basic quality tools and the seven deadly, <laughs> sorry, seven, you know, all those seven, I almost said the seven deadly sins, all those seven, look for them on ASQ. You know, for example, your affinity diagram. There's your affinity diagram. Hit enter and it comes up with an example of the affinity diagram. It comes up with a very thorough explanation and it puts it in a real world context. I mean, how cool is that? It goes beyond theory and takes it into a more practical, pragmatic view of this thing. All right. So, with that, again, <laughs> the web's playing up. Doesn't want me to show you all this stuff. But with that, um, I've come to an end of this very brief study of ITTOs. And I hope what I've shown you has helped you and will help you as you continue your PMP or CAPM exam journey. Remember, visit praiseion.com, www.praizion.com for more information about project management, tutorials, and what have you. Thank you very much for your audience.